Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm your host, Local 23. You're joining me for Freshman Book 2, Chapter 15, the season finale of Setting Sail. Let us begin. You and James arrive at the hospital to find Gabriella out front, pacing nervously as she rocks the baby in her arms. Gabriella, what happened? Professor Vasquez is missing? Oh, Mizumi, James. Thank God you're here! Dad collapsed again earlier this evening and was admitted to the hospital. Is he okay? Thankfully, he stabilized pretty quickly. He said he was feeling well enough to go outside. But I don't know what happened. One minute, the nurse was bringing him outside in a wheelchair, and the next minute, he was gone. What was he doing outside? He said he wanted some fresh air. He told the doctor he'd sue the hospital if they didn't let him. Well, he can't have gotten too far in his wheelchair. If we split up, maybe we can track him down. Good plan. How about I swing by the campus and you check the park down the street? Right. Gabriella, why don't you stay here in case he comes back? All right, I'll take this little guy back inside. It's just so cold. What if... Don't worry, Gabriella. We'll find your father. Then you'd better hurry. You wander around the park for almost half an hour. Just when you're about to give up, you see a seated figure by the fountain. Professor Vasquez? Ah, Mizumi. I figured someone would come looking for me. I should have known it might be you. Professor! What are you doing out here? It's cold. You need to get back inside. I already know what he's doing, but it's cold. You need to get back inside. If the doctor says you should stay in bed, the doctor is an imbecile. Professor? Well, it's true. I'm already dying. What more could possibly happen to me? Let me just enjoy myself while I still can. Okay, but I'm staying here with you. Stubborn as always. Vasquez sighs. You notice how tired he looks. If you're going to insist on sticking around, at least take me through the park, would you? You grasp the handles of the wheelchair and travel through the park with Vasquez in comfortable silence. You know, Mizumi, in some ways I'm grateful for this whole ordeal. Grateful? Yes. I know it seems strange, but it made me realize what misplaced priorities I had. I spent years estranged from my only daughter, and because of a mistake I was too proud to admit. When I leave this life, my greatest regret will be not making up with her sooner. Stop here, please, and sit down. You park his wheelchair next to a bench, and sit down next to him. He takes one of your hands. I know I've put you through hell this year. Well, that's all in the past. You're damn right you did. That's all in the past. Honestly, don't worry about it. Don't patronize me because I'm ill, Mizumi. I know I've caused you more than a few headaches. Headaches? <laughs> Stomach aches? Hand aches? I didn't even know that thing was a thing until I met you. Indeed. I get them frequently when the muse calls. But even with all that, you've taught me so much. Vasquez smiles and gives your hand a squeeze. If I could leave you with just one more lesson. Professor, don't talk like... Shut up and let me finish, Mizumi. Press your lips together, Vasquez sighs. 
You can't live your life with loose ends and unfinished stories. Be with the people you love while you have the chance. And when you do, don't just be with them. Be with them. Be present, be thoughtful, and always fight for them. You think back on your memories of those closest to you. Snowball fight! Oh, you are on. I call Chris. Chris and I are officially on a team. No fair! Chris literally got a scholarship for throwing stuff. Hey, let's talk more dodging, Tyler. Chris whips a snowball Tyler sidearm, explodes against the front of his shirt. You're gonna regret that! Sounds like roommate bonding day to me. I'm in. Aw, you guys are the best suitmates a girl could ask for. Get over here. Caitlin throws her arms out, scoops you all up into a group hug. I really am sorry about the snowball. Want me to kiss it and make it better? It leans and kisses your shoulder and then presses a gentle kiss to your lips. I... I will, Professor. My life is full of wonderful people, and I'm not going to take them for granted. Alright, Mizumi. I've had my say. If something's amiss in your life, then it's up to you to set things right. Professor... I don't know if I can. Thank you for the advice. I'll do my best. It's been a tough quarter, but I'm grateful that I've had your guidance. Pfft. Don't get sappy on me now. I am not the one with whom you need to reconcile. I suppose a nice heartfelt moment with you is just too much to ask? Forgive me, Mizumi. I just want to you to focus on sorting out your life. It may seem like you've got an insurmountable task ahead of you, but if you don't at least try, you'll spend the rest of your life wondering what would have happened if you had. So, don't waste any more time with me. Go, get your life together. And start with James. I'm getting really tired of this uncomfortable atmosphere surrounding the two of you. Okay, fair enough. I'll talk to him. You take the handles of Vasquez's wheelchair and begin to wheel him back to the hospital. Mizumi? Yes? I'm... I'm very proud of you. You return to the hospital to find James talking to Gabriella out front. Gabriella cradles the baby against her chest. There they are. What the hell were you thinking, Dad? I was worried sick. You could have frozen to death. I'm sorry, Gabriella. I just wanted to see the snow. Oh, and you had to sneak off without a word in order to do that? I went to your favorite park, the one we used to go to all the time when you were a child. Do you remember the time I brought you there and you made a snowman? You were six. Gabriel nods as tears start to fill her eyes. I let you dress the snowman in my scarf and put a bunch of leaves in his arms. I asked what you were doing, and you said that you were writing a book, or he was writing a book, just like your papa. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember. I often think about that day. I wanted to go back there today. Do you remember exactly? How it was. Dad. Let's go inside. The baby will get cold. 
You and James watch as Vasquez and Gabriela disappear through the hospital doors. James lets out a long sigh. Hey, you okay? I'll be fine. It's just been a crazy week, that's all. Do you want to talk about it? It's been hard to process everything. I have so many emotions bumping up against one another. I'm angry at Vasquez for keeping his condition a secret, but sad to see him declining. I feel hurt that you knew and didn't tell me, but I know it wasn't your fault. And part of me misses the way things were before. I wish that none of this had ever happened. I know, James. I wish things had gone differently, but I can't change the past. Um, it's tough. Whew. And take a moment. Okay, recompose myself. Um, I wish things had gone differently. Sometimes I wonder what would have happened if I never walked in on Vasquez that day. I wouldn't have had to lie to you, even though finding out later would have hurt. At least you and I would have gone through it together. That would have made things a bit more bearable. But I suppose some good has come of all this. How so? Coming face to face with mortality makes you really examine your life. Who knows how long any of us have? It may be kind of a morbid thought, but... No, I know what you mean. Life is too short to hold grudges. I want things to be right between us, Mizumi. You may have hurt me, but that doesn't outweigh all the happiness you've brought me to. James? James extends his hand. Truce? Truce. You shake hands. Thank God. I really missed you. I missed you too. Just please promise me that from now on, there are no more secrets between us. James, I promise. I never want to put you through anything like that again. Good, because I never want to go through anything like that again. So, I guess we should catch up to Vasquez. You go on. I have a few other things I need to take care of. I guess you have your own set of issues to work out, huh? You got that right, but let's hang out soon, okay? Like, uh, the boat dance tomorrow? Definitely. Looking forward to it. After trudging through the snow, you arrive home exhausted, but relieved. As you're heading to your room, you notice that Caitlin's door is slightly ajar. You poke your head in. Hey, Caitlin? Oh, hey, Mizumi. Caitlin is curled up on her bed, writing in a notebook. Have you started keeping a diary again? Yeah, but hopefully it will be less embarrassing this time around. It helps, you know, writing lets you, me sort out my thoughts. Caitlin, I... I just wanted to say sorry. Oh. I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to apologize for being so pushy about you coming out. Thinking about it now? You needed space, and I should have respected that. I only wanted to be there for you. Yeah. I could see that you were hurting, and I thought I could help. I was so focused on trying to be a supportive girlfriend, but I'm sorry I didn't pay more attention to what you actually needed from me. Working through all those emotions was something I needed to do alone, but I'm really grateful to know that you care about me that much. You've been so good to me. I 
feel like I'm the one who needs to apologize. What? But you have nothing to apologize for. Don't I? I shut you out when you were only trying to help me. Caitlin, I, I know how hard this has been for you. I understand that you needed time to yourself. But I was way too harsh. I was upset with my parents, and I took it out on you. My parents called me the other day. Yeah? How did it go? Better than I have thought. My dad apologized for storming off, and he's still adjusting. And I don't think he's entirely comfortable with who I am. But he said he'll always love me, no matter what. We'll work it out. Oh, Caitlin, there must be a huge relief. But now that I'm out, I was finally able to tell them about us. It got me thinking, none of this would have happened without you. What do you mean? When I'm with you, everything just feels right. For the first time in my life, I don't have to hide who I am. I don't even have to think about it. I just know that I'm happy, and there's no one else I'd rather be with. Caitlin, you take her hand, lacing her fingertips, fingers between her. I hope you can forgive me for the way I've been acting lately. There's nothing to forgive. Can I at least make it up to you by taking you to the boat dance? Oh. Maybe not this time. Yes, please. It's a date. Caitlin intently rubs her thumbs across the back of your hand. I can't wait to catch up. Us not talking has been killing me. Me too. Tomorrow's gonna be a night to remember. After staying up late talking to Caitlin, you wake up early the next morning and wait in the kitchen for Chris. His eyes widen as he walks in and sees the table fully set, a mountain of pancakes teetering in the center. Morning, Mizumi. What's all this? It's an apology breakfast. Take a seat. You pull a stack of pancakes on Chris's plate as he sits down. The two of you eat in silence. Thanks, Monazumi. You're a lifesaver. I needed these pancakes. Well, I thought you might. Like I said, I'm so sorry for what I did. And I know the others are, too. We couldn't stand the way Sebastian was trying to tear you down, so we took matters into our own hands. Chris nods. I'm listening. We should have had faith in you, been honest about it. Had faith in you. You've been such a class act. Every time Sebastian tried to sabotage you, you refused to take the bait. We should have known that you'd be able to handle this too. The more I think about it, the more idiotic I feel, and I'm sorry. I promise I'll never do it again. Will you forgive me? Chris hesitates for a moment. You bite your lip and look down at your pancakes. Finally, he speaks. I do. Forgive you, I mean. I forgive you. Oh, thank God. Chris laughs. I take it what it was bugging you? You have no idea. I mean, it's not like I haven't been <laughs> for given for much, much worse. Like I said, everyone deserves a second chance. Well, thank you for your pardon, Mr. President. M Mr. President? The title still feels weird? Weird, but good. I'm glad. Next quarter is going to be kick-ass. I can't wait. Isn't it crazy to think that after tonight, there will be one more quarter left of freshman year? And just a few months ago, we thought it would never end. Well, that was
Cause quick escalation. Wow. Um. Hmm. That's tough. I like the. I like the blue. I'm a fan of blue. Um, blue, black. Mainly are my two favorite colors. It really depends. But for outfits, black. I mean, given, especially in certain aspects. Uh, <clears throat> cough, cough. Um. That's a fantastic gown. That one's pretty too. I guess they don't tell you the name now. Oh, that used to be a thing. Well, that's the most expensive one. Um, yeah, we'll go with that one. This will have to do. Oh, we haven't seen this boat before. Evening appears, and you and your friends pile into Chris's car and drive to the shore. The boat. You board the boat to find it bustling with people. Music from the loudspeakers washes over the deck. Now this is a party. I'll say, this place is classy with a capital C. What a way to end the quarter. And I can't think of a better group to spend it with. Aw, Chris. I'll toast to that. Here, here. Let's make this a real toast. Someone get me a pina colada. Stat! Don't you ever forget, I'm on a boat, okay? You join the party. Spirits are high as the ocean sighs peacefully and a warm sea breeze rustles your hair. And that's when I really knew Tyler was a keeper. Come on, you have to be oblivious not to see that Kenna was talking into walking into a trap. I guess the couple that makes the crown and the flame predictions together stays together? We were thinking of doing a cosplay together at PixelCon this summer. Really? Oh my god, that would be so cute. Please take pictures. I don't know. I'm not sure if I'm ready for the world to see me on full-on roleplay mode. Well, I can't wait. I know you'll look amazing. Oh, stop. You're making me blush. I think that's just the wine. That's why I'm sticking with club soda, suckers. But... It's not like Sebastian was ever introduced in what I wanted. Interested. Well, hopefully he's not taking the breakup too hard. Spare me the pity, Mizumi. I'm sure his overinflated ego will cushion the blow. He wasn't angry that you helped to sabotage his campaign? May have been a little upset, but thankfully I don't actually care. It's a shame things didn't work out between you two. You're kind of a perfect match. Equals in narcissism. You could have been the Kimmy of Heartfelt. Sorry, but there's only room for one diva in my relationships. The night wears on. So, you never went square dancing again? Well, after a night like that, would... Who would it even invite me? I never knew that a couple of cows could do so much damage. Believe me, the cows weren't even the issue. It was the potato salad. Wait, so the cows knocked over the food table? Uh-huh. And the potato salad flew all over the mayor, who's deathly allergic to potatoes. Oh my god. Was he okay? His face swelled up pretty bad, but he survived. My reputation as a party guest, however, did not. I guess that'll teach you to never mess with any barn doors. Oh, consider that lesson learned. As people continue to mingle, you catch sight of Abby standing alone by the railing. Hey, everything okay? Yeah, I'm good. Just taking a moment to catch my breath. Alien on the railing next door. So, it sounds like you and Tyler have, have fun playing. How are things going with him? 
really good. I mean, I think we both have a lot of learning to do, but he's sweet, smart, funny, he cares about me, and, well, I think I love him. Abby, that's great. Have you told him then? Not yet. To be honest, I'm a little nervous. I don't think you have anything to be worried about. He's clearly devoted to you. But what if he doesn't feel the same way? Abby, I'll bet he loves you too. It won't be the end of the world. I bet he loves you too. He's probably thinking the same exact thing as you. I don't know, are you, are you sure? With him, it could be hard to tell. When I see you two together, he always looks like he's about to explode with happiness. Trust me, he's probably having the same conversation with Zack right now. You know, you're right. I actually feel a lot better. I'm going to try to work up the courage to tell him tonight. That's the spirit. Okay, I'm going to worry. I'm not going to worry about that for now. What about you? How's your life life? I talked to Caitlin earlier. How did it go? I know she was upset with me, but she understands that I was just trying to be supportive. So she's not mad at you anymore? I think things are back to normal now. I'm glad. You two have been so good together. I think so too. And I'm happy she's starting to feel more comfortable with herself. She means a lot to me. Do you think, you know, uh, are you ready to say it? You mean, do I love her? Yeah? <sighs> yes. No. I don't know. Yes. I do love her. Are you gonna tell her? M maybe. I'll see if I can get her loot for a moment. Love is complicated, I guess. I'm gonna have to talk to you about it. Same! I've been worrying about what to say to Tyler all day. It feels good to get it off my chest. That's gonna be fine, Abby. I hope so. Okay, I'll stop moving now. Shall we get back to the party? You go on ahead. I'll catch up with you later. As you return to the deck, you run right into Caitlin. Hey! There you are! I was looking for you! Yeah? What's up? I want to check out the view from the bow. Come with me? Sure. Lead the way. Wow! The ocean looks so beautiful at night. Not just the ocean. You push a strand of Caitlin's hair behind her ear. Always the charmer, Mizumi. Hey, I try. I mean, so wound up lately, I almost forgot what relaxing felt like. Better enjoy it while you can. Freshman year's not over yet? I will. As long as you're here. I'm glad we're finally getting a moment alone together. Kayla wraps her arms around your waist, brushing her lips against yours. You press closer to her, and she runs her hands up and down your body. As she leans deeper into your kiss, you can taste her strawberry chapstick. Finally, she tears herself away. Mmm. I can't think of anything that would make tonight more perfect. Well, I can think of a few things. I feel like it's been so long... I want to make up for lost time. <laughs> Alright, me too. I take this below deck. <sighs> we 
still have so much to catch up on. I've missed you so much. Are you sure all you want to do is talk? No, I'm not. I'm just giving you 18 diamonds. She nuzzles your neck, her lips just barely grazing the skin there. I just want to enjoy this moment with you. It doesn't matter how. You take like Caitlin's hand, and the two of you gaze out at the water. When I think back of the day we met, I couldn't have ever imagined we'd end up, well, here. For the longest time, I thought I'd never be able to act on my own feelings. But in less than a year, I've been more comfortable with myself, and I've finally come out to my family. And I've ended up with the best girlfriend ever. I'm just glad that you're happy. You mean the world to me. I'm not going to hold myself back out of fear anymore. I promise myself I listen to my heart from now on. And what's your heart telling you right now? That this is the only place in the world I want to be. Mizumi, I love you. Caitlin, as far as this isn't a diamond option. <laughs> I love you too. I don't know if I'm ready yet. I love you too. I was working up the courage to tell you. Well, as long as someone says it, right? You put your hand on Caitlin's cheek, gazing into her eyes. When I think about everything that's happened this last year, my happiest memories are with you. You mean this fun times, more exciting, and the hard times more bearable. There's no one else I'd rather be with. Mizumi, I feel the same way. You kiss Caitlin on her forehead, then on her lips. Hey, do you feel like dancing? I thought you'd never ask! Come on, let's head back to the party. As you head back to the main deck, you see Madison and Logan standing by the railing. You turn to Caitlin. Hey, can you give me a second? Sure, I'll meet you back on the deck. Oh, Logan, I'm so happy. Me too, Madison. You know, I've really fallen for you. What? You should be more careful. <laughs> she grabs Logan's hand and pulls him away from the railing. I don't want you to fall into the water. Uh, no, I... Uh, oh, um, of course. I'm, I'm staying right here with you. Madison turns and notices you. Hey, Madison, I'm not interrupting, am I? No, not at all. I was just making sure Logan doesn't fall off the deck. Uh, yeah, thanks, babe. He's so funny. Did you know he had a crush on me all quarter? Wow. I had no idea. Well, it all worked out okay. We're officially dating now. I can't wait to tell Trip. He's going to be so happy for us. Uh, I'm sure he will. But let's enjoy some time alone before we go give him the good news. Oh, Logan, we're not alone. Mazumi is with us. About that. Say no more. I'll give you lovebirds some space. Back in the main deck, you find your friends gathered in a circle. There you are! Grab a drink! We're getting ready to make a toast. Great. What are we toasting to? To the great times we've had so far, and even more next quarter. Oh. Yeah, next quarter. Mizumi, is something wrong? Y'all know that Vasquez doesn't have much time left. And it just occurred to me. When he's gone, so is my scholarship. But there's gotta be something you can do. 
Look, whatever happens, I want you guys to know that you've made this one of the best years of my life. Even if it has to come down to an end, I'm thankful for all the time I've had at Heartfelt, however short. Zack closes his own and taps on his glass. If I could say a few words, I think we can all agree that this has been pretty eventful quarter. We've even had our ups and downs, but one thing remains the same throughout. We take care of each other, no matter what. Whether we're studying for tough exams, confronting our problems, facing loss, or figuring out who we are. We can all be grateful knowing that our friends will be there to help us through it. I drink to that. Hear her. Everyone cheers and clinks their glasses together. Guys, you're the best people in the world. Thank you for everything. I just can't believe it might be our last quarter together. Why the long faces? The night's not over yet. Zack begins loosening his bow tie. Uh, Zack, what are you doing? It's our last night. Then it's gotta be memorable! Kawabunga! Zack rushes to the edge of the boat, then jumps off into the water. Oh my god. Zack, are you okay? Zack calls out from the water. Come on down, you guys! The water feels great! Well, you heard the man. Everyone laughs and jumps in after him. Bombs away! Woohoo! Check this out. Swan dive belly flop cannonball! <sighs> cannonball. You plunge in the water, splashing everyone. Hey, watch it! Hey, this is way colder than I was led to believe. Just keep swimming, you'll warm up. Abby swims to Tyler and starts kissing him. I can warm you up. Whoa, I can't swim and kiss at the same time as much as I'd like to. Listen, Tyler, there's something I wanted to say. I love you. Uh, oh, I... Oh my god, uh, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to. I just... Tyler, I was just about to say the same thing. I love you too. Really? Wow, I... I'm so happy. Okay, is there a buoy we can grab onto because we're swimming or not? Uh, I need to kiss you now. Let's give them some space. You guys, I can't think of a better way to end the quarter. Me either. This has been one of the best nights of my life. Promise me we're always going to be friends. Cross my heart and hope to drown a watery death at the hands of... Ah! Zack, what is it? Sorry, some seaweed just brushed against my leg. Okay, I'm regretting my decision to jump overboard. No, no regrets. Come on, I'll race you to those rocks over there. Winner buys everyone ice cream. The waves lap around you and your friends, your laughter ringing into the night. Spring arrives. Thanks for meeting with us, Mizumi. I know you weren't planning to come back this quarter. It's... No trouble, really. I needed to come and pick up the last of my things anyway. How's the baby doing, Gabriella? Getting bigger every day. Have you decided on a name? Enrique. After his grandfather. That's beautiful, Gabriella. I'm sure if Professor Vasquez were here, he'd be so proud. It's a shame little Rico won't get to meet his namesake, but 
I want him to remember who his grandfather was. I'm sure he will. I know you were close. So what do you think I should tell little Enrique about him? Tell him Professor Vasquez was hardworking, driven, stubborn. Well, he was definitely all three of these. Hardworking. Even after his diagnosis, he didn't slow down on his bug. In fact, I think he even worked harder. My dad's work ethic was one of his best qualities. I hope Enrique inherits some of it. He wasn't perfect, but he was a good person. He gave me a chance when I really needed it. I'll miss him. I will too. But I'm glad to hear he made a positive impact on your life. I'm just sad that it wasn't enough in the end. What do you mean? Now that Vasquez is gone, so is my scholarship. I can't stay here. Gabriella and Yasmin exchange a glance. About that! Mizumi, my father made a note in his will about you. What? Really? He will continue to fund your scholarship with his inheritance on one condition. You have to finish his book. Will you struggle to keep your place at Heartfelt? under these new conditions, or will you rise to the new challenge? Find out in Freshman Book 3. Coming soon. Oh, it was a really tough chapter for me. Um, wow. So, it was tough for me because of some of the friends and family that I've lost. Um, especially because of cancer. Um, it was really tough. It was really tough not to, like, stop the video and get really emotional. Um... Sometimes you just gotta to bottle your emotions. And, uh, that was tough. It was really tough. Um, so with that being said, I hope you guys really enjoyed, um, the season finale of Freshman. Vasquez will be, I'm sure a lot of people feel a role that hopefully they in some mannerism feel in book three um or at least you could have like two people that kind of together kind of remind you of him that'd be cool um but otherwise that um that was tough like I said that was that was that was really tough so until next time, folks, um, feel free to check out Rules of Engagement and also Crown of the Flame. Those will be coming up here shortly. I'll do Rules of Engagement next, as well as Crown of the Flame. I'm going to take a break uh, real quick between before doing uh, Rules of Engagement, because like I said, this has been uh, a really... I haven't been this emotional in, in, in quite a while, so... Um, I'm going to take a, a little break before doing that book. Um, I hope you guys did enjoy Feel free to like, comment, share, and if you're not already, subscribe. And um, until next time, folks, have a good one.